this is a barometer. They both played Duke three games, Texas A&M two games, but this is the most comparable opponent they've come across, the most pressure defense they've faced. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top today. And Duke in their white. Texas A&M in the maroon. Great to be with you on ACC Network Extra for this SEC versus ACC women's basketball tilt. Bowles bounce pass down. Coresdale out of this game day to day according to Coach Lawson. So back into the starting lineup is last year's ACC freshman of the year, Dave Wilson with Brown, Volker, Oliver, and Taylor. That's the starting lineup for Coach Lawson and the home team, the Duke Blue Devils. Day Wilson drops it down low. Up and in, good little move that time as the finish there from Brown. And that's a nice sign for the Blue Devils going in low post. Kennedy Brown, the 6'6 junior transfer from Oregon State. Nice little hook shot around the basket. Bowles, Green, Jones, Barker, and a Patty and finished at the rim there by Barker. We're tied at two. And yes, folks, that is a freshman. She, she's got such a physique, so strong. What a beautiful floater off the glass. You could tell Texas A&M was ready for that full court press. And how they handle the press. We, we said both, both teams facing good pressure defense. Both of these coaches hang their hats on the defensive havoc they can wreak on their opponents. And Texas A&M did, did do a nice job getting right through the Blue Devil press. Debbie, let's look at the keys for both these teams heading into this one here. Well, Texas A&M has good size and their great athleticism in the paint. So they really need to dominate the boards. But what they don't want is to let Duke get into a track meet. They want to dictate the tempo. Duke is a great transition team. And for Duke, they want to get up and deny and be really disruptive with their defense, make it difficult for the Aggies to move the ball. And they're going to have to find a way to limit the size in the paint, box out, not give second shot opportunities. Always an honor to work with the longtime William & Mary head coach, Debbie Taylor. Less than 90 seconds into this one, tied at two. Off the back end of the rim, Duke misses there. First shot for Taylor. Now AM can push it. Nobody home, turnover. This is what we're talking about. The defensive pressure, the athleticism, the speed of the game is now picked up for both of these teams. And it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. Said it in the opening, a lot of new faces for both programs, new systems. Both teams still learning and putting the pieces together. Final seconds there, just getting it in bounds. Day Wilson, stop and pop. Kept alive for a moment, but now Texas A&M can push. That was a brick, missed everything, rebound Duke. And Joni Taylor talked to us about taking good shots, and I don't know if she would call that a good shot. It's, it's knowing when to shoot, knowing when you have rebounders taking the best possible shot for your team and looking for a high-low opportunity there for Duke. It's Kennedy Brown got her player sealed up really high, had a lot of space, throw that ball to the rim, easy bucket. And here comes Duke's press, full court man. See how the Aggies handle it this time. High-low executed perfectly to give Duke the two-point lead. Setting for three and buried there by Bowles. And that's the chance you take with the press if you have a really great shooter like the other wonderful freshman on this Aggie team, Sydney Bowl. She is an elite shooter. She can knock it down from behind the arc. Had three threes in her debut, averaging nine and a half points a game now. This Texas A&M team, two of their top three scorers are freshmen. Oliver, right down Main Street, missed it. Got to make that. And that's way too easy off that handoff of getting to the rim. Texas a and is going to have to figure that out as we see a walk there by Barker. But wow, she's a rim runner. Boy, she can get rim to rim quickly. She can fly. Let's take a look at that high-low play for Duke. You see this nice pass into the high post for Jordan Oliver, who's one of the best passers on this Duke team. And you see how Brown just gets great position, pushes her defender up the lane, and that's an easy basket at the rim. So Oliver comes out after missing that runner right at the rim. She'll sit down for a moment. Day Wilson, that's twice. She stopped and popped. This time she's fouled, Debbie, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. McKenzie Green had Cheyenne Day Wilson 
she was in front of her, and then she Cheyenne Day Wilson, who is the last year's ACC Freshman of the Year, has an uncanny ability to create her own shot. You know she's going to go for the pull-up jump shot. Keep your hands up straight in the air. Don't foul. But again, for both teams, learning a little bit still about defensive discipline. I thought Coach Joni Taylor said it well. She said, we have a lot of players who have been in the car, but they've never driven it. Mm. That was a great line. As the level of competition picks up, experience is really important. And for both these teams playing a lot of new players, we see Cheyenne Day Wilson, as we said, last year's ACC Freshman of the Year, averaged over 12 points a game. When the shot clock is winding down, for as short as she is, she has a way to get her shot off. She's such a great athlete and such an intense competitor. By way of Canada, the aforementioned Day Wilson. Beating the press with the dribble and some quickness. Bowles has another three. Great job by the Aggies. And you see how Bowles just buries herself on the baseline in the corner. Just break through that press, find her with her feet spotted up, and she's hit back-to-back -back threes. Six of the eight points for double zero, who is keeping an eye now defensively on number 24, Richardson. Richardson has ties to the new Texas A&M head coach. We'll see how long Duke stays in this press. If they can get back. It's an immediate matchup with Sydney Bowles. Not going to give her another look from behind the arc against the press. Now Duke makes Texas A&M settle into their half-court offense. We'll see how they respond to Duke's pressure defense. It's got to be a big game for Richardson, though, going against her former coach and Joni Taylor. Just watch this nice cut up the middle and it creates numbers and Bowles is spotted up in the corner. That's a great pass, draw the defense, kick to a wide open teammate in the corner. Good pressure defensively. It'll be knocked off of Richardson who played for Joni Taylor. Great success at Georgia, staying in the conference. Texas A&M has a great new head coach. They really do. She had, had so much success at Georgia. Got her team to the SEC championship game. So hard to work your way to the top of the SEC. She was SEC coach of the year. She was runner-up for national coach of the year. Her seven years as head coach at Georgia really took that team to another level. Miss there, so Duke can take the lead again. Taylor. Force that one. Wow. You talk about that power of Barker. She'll give it right back, though, and Taylor will finish this one. Unfortunate there after the rip from Barker. And Barker just saying to her teammates, slow down a little bit. It was a pretty amazing rebound. And, and what the press is designed to do is just make you pick up your tempo of play. And we talked about, you know, Texas A&M being able to control tempo. Barker grabs the rebound, but she gets bumped, and it knocks the ball loose, and that creates this easy opportunity for Celeste Taylor. Duke up two, can add to it. Good looking shot. Richardson. Dragon Richardson, the former Georgia player. Duke really sets a lot of ball screens, a lot of handoffs, and you have to be able to defend them, whether you switch them or go under them or go over them. Duke up by four. Big non-conference matchup here in Durham. And after a stellar career as the head coach at Georgia, Joni Taylor brings her amazing coaching resume to College Station and takes over the helm of the Texas A&M program. She played in the SEC herself, and she may have one of the best coaching pedigrees in the game. She worked with legends. She played for Rick Moody, great SEC coach at Alabama, and then went to Louisiana Tech as an assistant working for Leon Barmore, then to LSU, where she worked for the great Van Chancellor, and then spent time with Andy Landers at Georgia until he left the program into her very capable hands. And now she's sitting in the chair of a legend, Gary Blair at Texas A&M. So she has worked with the best, and she's becoming one of the best coaches in the game. Great breakdown, Debbie, and a good look at Coach Taylor. Richardson, who I've mentioned a couple times, played for Coach Taylor last year, will go to the line. I started to ask you when we went to the press break, but that's got to add a little bit different feeling, I'd say, in the stomach there for Richardson going against her former coach. 
Yeah, I, you know, and, and, and Joni Taylor has such great relationships with her players. She's such a player's coach, so it's interesting. Um, you know, Coach Karen Lang, who's on the bench, she was a former assistant at Georgia and came, and obviously Richardson came with her, so I'm sure it's a pretty amicable relationship. It'll probably make you a little bit nervous. Here comes the press again. Texas A&M once again easily gets through that press. It eats a good 10 seconds off the shot clock. Now we'll see how they execute in the half court. You have to set good screens, make good cuts. Now we see the range of Barker. She can play under the basket. She can shoot the three. And here comes Duke in transition. Duke driving to the basket, and it'll be out of bounds to Texas A&M. Both these coaches philosophically pretty similar. They love pressure defense. They want to get up in passing lanes. They want to make it difficult for you to move the ball. And they both love the transition game. They want to play a fast tempo, get high percentage shots, force you to get back on defense, pick up the pace of the game. Richardson feeling it. It's her own rebound. Needed to go up immediately with it. Instead hesitated and missed it. I like the slowdown here by AM. They don't want to get in a track meet with Duke. They want to control the tempo of this game. Duke 5 for 11 from the floor. Texas AM 3 for 7. They trail by 6. 333 remaining here in the first. Stop and pop. Really nice looking shot there from number two, Barker. Wow, an amazing footwork, too, for the freshman. This beautiful reverse pivot in the pull-up, and she hits from pretty far out there. But Duke defense, that's tough to guard. The Duke defense is really making Texas A&M work for every look they get at the basket right now. Brown at the elbow, cut from Taylor. Taylor gonna try to post up, that's great defense. Texas A&M saw that one coming, picked off by KK Green. You really have to communicate as Duke uses that pinch post to send cutters and handoffs on. And right that time, Texas A&M able to switch and talk and, and hold down and get the ball back. KK Green out of Chicago. Produced a lot of good basketball players, men and women. Hilton, Hilton, stroke look good. Back of the rim, rebound Taylor. Taylor can push it. Let's see if Duke fills the lanes. Now they'll set their offense. Taylor might be the offense. Little fake and air ball. Rebound for Duke. Taylor will reset to Day Wilson. Shot clock at 10. Day Wilson gets some space. Rebound Richardson with a little left shoulder and then the right hand up and in. Now we talked about the boards and that was the third shot opportunity and it's Reagan Richardson, the Georgia transfer again with the easy basket right there on the weak side of the glass. Richardson and Brown. Richardson with six, Brown with four and it's 16 to 10. Duke doing a really good job defensively. Nice show on that screen there by Kennedy forcing Texas A&M into contested outside shots. That one, an air ball, and if Texas A&M keeps shooting from the outside, it's going to be a tough night for them. Day Wilson, great pass. A little hesitation, finds Volker. And Coach Joni Taylor wants to talk it over. After the air ball for Texas A&M, they go the other way. Nice little shake and bake, little pass, 18 to 10, Duke. When Duke passes the ball, for sure, they're more effective. Well, the Blue Devils have a tremendous willingness to work together this season, and they're sixth in the country in assists per game, and you see that beautiful drop pass, great vision from Day Wilson to the sophomore Lee Volker for an easy layup. Duke's number six, averaging 22 assists a game right now, sixth in the country, share the ball incredibly well. See Hampton at 30, Duke right there tied with Iowa, 22 assists a game, 69 assists on 95 made free throws. That's a pretty impressive stat. And the thing about it, every single player on the team is part of those dishes. Good job down low, tough angle, finished neatly there. And going the other way is the baskets from Patty. I like that nice call out of the break. Patty coming off the up screen. Get it into a high-low situation. She goes up and catches that pass and lays it in. That was not easy, but she made it look easy. A foul called against Duke. 
see Patty pushes her defender up the lane, corrals that pass, and then kisses it off the glass. Well done. Patty, a transfer from Ohio State. See if AM continuing to look to, they have a height advantage in this one. They've got more bigger body in the paint, and there's Patty going to work down low, and it's Elizabeth Balagoon with the foul. And so we said the, the first, uh, a lot of the shots early on from Texas A&M were from the perimeter, but now they've readjusted and looking to really get that ball inside. To Jesus, Jackson, Balagoon, Oliver, and Heidi now in for Coach Lawson. Hilton, Green, Malone, Jones, and the player at the line, Patty, in for Texas A&M, who will try to cut the lead to four. It's now five. And the great thing about this Duke team, and we talked about it in the open, when they sub, they don't miss a beat. They don't have a drop in talent when they go to their bench. They have so many weapons in the arsenal, so many different ways to score, multiple different different types of lineups they can play. Coach Lawson's put together a 17-player roster. They've got a lot of depth, a lot of size, and a lot of good athleticism. The Jesus is fouled by KK Green. So already over the limit, so DeJesus will go to the line. DeJesus, go ahead. Well, we just talked about this game being a barometer, and I think for both coaches um, with a lot of new pieces in their programs, you know, they're going to learn a lot tonight about the things they need to work on moving forward because the schedule gets a lot more difficult as they go from here. So they'll see how their young team handles things, and then they'll make the appropriate adjustments. Yeah, we'll have more on their upcoming schedule. It is a tough one indeed. And Coach Lawson talking about the notion of going on the road to play some tough mid-majors. I really like that. She was animated about that part of making the schedule. Well, she was saying that a lot of coaches at the D1 level don't want to play good mid-majors on the road as we see Duke force kind of an unforced turnover. She's really excited. She wants she wants pressure defense. She wants defense to be dominating. And for Texas A&M, they talked about being able to make that entry pass because of the pressure defense. De Jesus. When you see the multiple screening actions, and well done, well defended there by Patty. She's a returning starter. She averaged seven and a half rebounds, led the last season, leading the team, led them in blocks. She's the most experienced returner they have. And there's Patty. And after one quarter here, the SEC's Texas A&M trailing the ACC's Duke Blue Devils 20 to 14. Duke leading after one, 20 to 14. Duke led by Carol Lawson, who certainly knows a little bit about the SEC, a four-time first-team All-SEC player at Tennessee. What an amazing career she's had. Really two seasons. I can't even count the first season at Duke. Really just settling in now. And she's really starting to build this program into a contender. She's brought in a great influx of talent and, and starting to put together her defensive philosophy and what she believes in and trying to get consistency and effort and execution and defensive discipline. But, you know, Coach Lawson, one of three NCAA Division I women's basketball coaches to play in a Final Four, win an Olympic gold medal, and win a WNBA championship. Pretty impressive. Incredible. Richardson, two for six, and... Unfortunately for her, the four misses have been pretty easy shots. She's getting good looks. Here's Richardson. Shoots a three. Oh, in and out, two for seven. Patty with the rebound. Just pop back off that high screen. Uses the left hand. Good defense. Nice pick up by Balagoon. 
Coach Lawson and Coach Taylor got to work as coaches together this summer as assistants in the FIBA Women's World Cup, bringing home the gold medal for the U.S. And they got to spend a month together uh, and really enjoyed spending time with each other. We got to talk a little bit about both with both of them today. But what an opportunity when you get to coach USA basketball and, and travel with some of the best players in the country and continue to evolve as a coach. Jackson comes out of the game for Coach Lawson. You need to keep your eyes on the scores table because Duke will run in players a lot. Taylor with the back cut, not there, as Roby slowed it down. Roby trying to slide her feet. And another four shot there from Richardson. Taylor, good pump fake. Misses at the basket. Rebounding was really important to Coach Lawson, not just for this game, but moving forward. Texas A&M having a little bit of difficulty guarding that multiple screening action that, that Duke's using in the, in the pinch post. Whether they're switching or however they're guarding, it's got to be more communication. And it's tough, too, when you start two freshmen and you have a younger team um, who hasn't had a lot of game minutes and learning and implementing a new defensive system. This is a Texas A&M team who, under Coach Gary Blair, who was Joni Taylor's predecessor, played a slower game. They played more zone, gap defense. So they're learning a whole new defensive system. And with that comes some growing pains, especially early in the season. Sydney Roby into the game. ACC fans will recognize her as she played for former Duke great Coach Meyer down in Miami, now a member of the Texas A&M team. And she's a returning starter. She started 15 games last season. And, you know, for this, for her, this style, this up and down the court kind of style is, is not as easy as playing in the system she played in before for Coach Blair. And, and to her credit, Coach Joni Taylor telling us she stayed this summer. She stayed to work with the strength and conditioning coach and get in better shape. And you can see she brings great size to this team. And we've got a little bit leak out there. We're going to bring it out, settle down, run the half-court offense. Green. Green wearing 23. Bowles came top of the key. Blue Devils right now doing a great job not letting the Aggies make the next pass. Good pressure defense. Barker with the step back. Wow. She kills it, drains it. She's excited. Wow. That was impressive because you nailed it. The defense, all five Duke players, strong D, but the step back from number two. And the three-point shot is keeping Texas A&M in this right now. Only down five. Under eight minutes left here in the first half. Backdoor cut, Taylor. And the end one. That is a great read by the senior Celeste Taylor. Switching on the perimeter, but the switch was too high. And she gets, here comes the switch, and she sees the opening to the basket, and she just slips the switch to the basket and is able to draw the foul. You got to body up on that switch, not lose your man. And that's experience right there. Celeste Taylor, she's a transfer from Texas. As a sophomore, she helped lead Texas to the Elite Eight. She has a lot of experience in big time games and that only is gonna bode well for the Blue Devils coming down the stretch. She is tied with Barker for game high, seven points. Again, breaking the press with the dribble, but you gotta be aware as Taylor comes back, gets a piece of it. And it'll be a jump ball. It'll stay with Texas A&M. Celeste Taylor is the heartbeat of this team. She's an energizer bunny, and she, she can get from one end to the other end very quickly. She led the Blue Devils in steals last year. She sat out for seven games, and they were two, of, two, two wins, five losses without her. So she is a big piece of the leadership and the energy of the team. De Jesus with the unfortunate foul. I'll take that because her 1v1 defending, I think, is outstanding. Number two to Jesus for Duke. She's a great off-ball defender. She knows how to get in passing lanes. She knows how to work. She just hustles all the time. And as you said, I'm sure Coach, Coach Lawson is fine with that extra effort on that foul. She just hustles. Here's Green. I wondered if Barker was going to go heat check that time, but she gives it up. That's a forced shot. Kept alive by Barker. Now she's she gives it up again, looking for Roby. The Blue Devil defense is really dictating what Texas A&M is doing right now. They're forcing them into contested outside jump shots, difficult shots, and right there, 
another turnover by the Aggies, just making them play at an uncomfortable pace. We just have this single down screen, pop back by DeJesus. Celeste Taylor is going to use that opportunity to post up against a smaller defender than Mackenzie Green, the graduate student, make the easy layup. It's the third time she's posted up. She's made two of the three, and the lead is 10. Well, and she's 5'11". She's got great size for a guard, which gives her the ability to go down on a block and make that happen. Here's Roby. And it'll be pushed. Outlet pass. Taylor can run the court. Got to make that layup right there. When you're running it like that, it's still just a 10-point lead. And that's one of the first transition possessions you've seen Duke have tonight, and all ca caused by that double team in the post, and Roby trying to throw it out. She turns it over. Every pass is contested here. Wow, good little move with the dribble, but missing it there. Barker, she's got a handle as well, Debbie. She's got quite a skill set. She's one impressive freshman, and as we said, the number three recruit in the 2022 class. She was a WBCA McDonald's and Jordan Brand All-American, won a high school national championship, big time player, great drop pass by Reagan Richardson. He's having a great game. see Richardson shot fake. She goes to the basket and she splits two defenders with that bounce pass. Great vision. Kennedy Brown, the transfer from Oregon State, is on the free throw line. 6'6". Six, six. She brings a nice low post presence to the Blue Devils. I like that pass from Richardson because she was two for eight from the floor. So she could force one trying to make one or she could draw a defender over Debbie and find a Duke player open, that's exactly what she did. One of the things we've noticed in the Blue Devils early is their unselfishness. They really they really do share the ball and are so willing to work together as the press continues. Nice deflection. And defensively, if they're not stealing the ball, they get so many deflections. And and that just that, that just makes the opponent more tentative and more nervous. Soft pressure that time. And picked off by Taylor. Taylor, defensive weapon, finishes it. She's got 11, first player in double digits. Taylor, number zero for Duke. You got to step to the pass when you're playing against an aggressive defensive team like Duke. Texas A&M needs to settle in here and, and, and execute and get a good possession. That didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock is down to 10. Patty. Kind of a four shot, but buried right there by Kindred. Another three for the Aggies. With a hand in the face. They've made some tough shots that are keeping them in this one. They've got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. Coach Joni talk, Taylor talked to us about that today when she spent some time with us and shoot around. Texas A&M, four for seven from three, as Debbie Taylor just said, the three truly keeping them in this game, and yet they're still down 10. Here's Barker using that power and gets the rebound. She's got a little bit of Ron Artest in her game, I think, a little bit of scrappiness. We got a good one here. Taylor with another still trying to pull away, but the three keeping A&M in this game at 30 to 20. For Texas A&M, a six foot four forward number two, Janiah Barker. She right now, the freshman, as you see that beautiful floater off the glass and you see the great footwork. She just does a reverse pivot and knocks down the shot. She's got so many ways she can score. The step back, three point shot. And right now she's leading her team with seven points and five rebounds and she's on the free throw line. That's all muscle, too, at the line right there. This has a great athletic build and the ability to play every position, really, on the court. Nine points. 
Lead cut to eight. Day Wilson. Slowly brings it up. Balagoon wants to get a shot off. And rebounded by Texas A&M. Trying to keep it alive there is Taylor. Jump ball will keep it with Duke. Barker got lucky on that. And we talked about freshman learning defense. She went under that handoff. And Balagoon read that and stepped back. And Balagoon, graduate student, much more experienced. But you've got to really, when you have a shooter, you're going to have to go over or switch that out. Barker fell over over there before. It looked like she rolled her ankle a little bit. So she's gone to the bench right now, talking to the training staff of Celeste Taylor with the pull up. Just can't knock it down. Here comes Texas A&M. The outlet for Texas A&M. Coach Joni Taylor telling us how she's trying to teach her team to be an up-tempo team. And sometimes when you're in the growing pain stage, the turnovers like that happen, you get going a little bit too fast. But she loves the up-tempo game. And, and little by little, she'll get her team there. But you look at it as a, she talks about becoming. That's their motto for the year. And commitment to the process and getting better every day and perfecting daily habits and, and just trying to become an elite team. But it takes a little while. Taylor, Balagoon, rolls off of it. Balagoon, a lot of power, good finish. Well, and right now the Blue Devils doing a nice job with their taller guards, backing players under the basket and using that height to finish at the rim and getting some high percentage shots. The lead is 10 again, 32-22, 3-20 remaining here in the first half. Balagoon, those quick hands. So one of the things, no matter what team she's been at, remember three ACC schools, she's always had those quick, active hands. Oh, and there's the Blue Devil defense again, and right now they're just being incredibly disruptive. Texas A&M is having a difficult time moving the ball. They're in passing lanes. They're just, they're tall, they're long. They take away vision, but they put good pressure on the ball, and it makes it difficult to move the ball. Balagoon goes down low. Unable to catch it is Kennedy Brown, the junior transfer from Oregon State. As I mentioned, Coresdale, also from Oregon State, not available tonight for Coach Lawson. That's short. It was tipped by Brown. Outlet up and in. Good finish at the basket by Ashlyn Jackson, the freshman out of China, Texas. Sometimes a bad shot turns into a turnover and an easy bucket on the other end and Duke able to create offense with their defense on that one and that prompts coach Joni Taylor to call a very good timeout to regroup her team as they've gone into this 12 point deficit but Duke's defense has been swarming and right there a taller Kennedy Brown just gets her hand on the shot of Jada Malone and that sends Duke off to the races one of their transition baskets of the evening you do not want to get into a track meet with Duke transition offense is one of their strengths so Barker clearly did something with the left ankle as they're going to add a brace. And Captain Obvious, if Barker cannot get back in there, it will be a daunting task for Texas A&M. Well, it looked like she rolled her ankle a little bit, but hopefully they can tighten that ankle brace up and get her back out there quickly. Nice job again by Texas A&M to get through that press. Green. It's a screen, re-screen action. Green gets it back, little runner, nice finish. And that's nice execution. KK Green, quick off that screen, re-screen, little quick first step, pull up. Good job. Day Wilson, along with Taylor, Jackson, Balagoon, and Brown. Here's Taylor sitting on 11. Missing is Jackson. Underneath, but looked like out of bounds. Good call by the officiating crew here. It'll go the other way. And that's just another example. That's what they want to do. That's what the coaching staff is getting them to do. Play up tempo. Push that ball ahead, but that pass just a little too fast and a little uh, out of reach, forcing that turnover. Day Wilson. Kennedy Brown earns the foul.
These turnovers are starting to pile up for Texas A&M, and they can ill afford not to get a good shot off when you play against Duke. And we said so many multiple offensive weapons, so many ways that they can score. They're great in transition, and their defensive game gets better and better every time they step on the court. Kennedy Brown, the Oregon State transfer at the line right now. Knocks down another one. Lead is 12. Blue Devils going to back the press off a little bit. We can tell you Barker has moved closer to the assistant coaches on the Texas A&M bench. And hopefully she just tweaked it and they'll have her back in the second half. Kennedy Malone. Brown just playing off out there. Jada Malone's not going to shoot it, so she's going to help out in the post. Shot clock's down to five. Little daylight for KK Green. Rebound Balagoon. Balagoon will drop it over. Day Wilson back to Balagoon. Nice pass. Look at that sharing of the basketball. That extra pass to create a better shot for a teammate. Well done. Lead is 14 with 60 seconds remaining. And the foul will go to number 30, Day Wilson, sophomore from Toronto. Here they go. Watch the Blue Devils share the ball. Nice little no look from Day Wilson to Balagoon, thanking your teammate for the good pass. Another assist for Duke. Seven assists for. Duke. Shot clock down to two. That's just great D. Great effort by KK Green Jr. to even get that shot up, but the Blue Devil defense again, spot on, really making it difficult for Texas A&M to run their offense. And this is what Coach Lawson talks about, be disruptive defensively, and they are dictating what Texas A&M does offensively right now. Shot clock, game clock, 10 seconds separating the two. Balagoon, nice bucket. Balagoon starting to heat up. She's got six. That's just more ball screen defense and lack of communication. Two players playing one ball. Balagoon slips to the basket. That's an easy layup again. Patty, extra pass. And the last shot, not successful. Duke with their biggest lead of the game to close it out, 40 to 24. Excellent point. Texas A&M will start with the basketball in their maroon jerseys. Cameron Indoor, Durham, North Carolina, Thursday night. First real test for both these teams. Both these teams playing a lot of players. They each played 10 in that first half. And look for the Aggies to get that ball in the hands of Janiah Barker. Nice to be able to come out of the half, draw a set off the board. She was able to pick up the foul there. Lee Volker this afternoon, this evening, playing the four position in the starting lineup due to that injury to Corsdale. Bowles was open, should have shot it. Instead, took three little steps and called for traveling. 40-24 still. Texas A&M starts the half with their 12th turnover. Oliver. Nice hedge on that screen by Patty. Well defended so far. Yep, and Patty again comes over, and I think they're going to get Patty for just a little nick there on Day Wilson, a little bail out there. Patty just needs to get over there and put her hands up instead of swatting at it and hitting her with the body. And that's when we talk about discipline defense. Make Cheyenne Day Wilson, five foot five, shoot over you when you're that tall. Put your hands straight up alter her shot, make it difficult. Instead, she goes to the free throw line and she knocks it down. As you talked about in the first half, Dave Wilson coming off 13 points and three rebounds per game a year ago. Led the team with 107 assists. She can score and she can certainly distribute Celeste Taylor with the hustle, creating a second shot opportunity. And Texas A&M's come out to start the half doing a lot of things that they don't want to do, turning it over giving up an offensive rebound. Well defended on that ball screen right there. Celeste Taylor gets a little daylight. She takes it baseline and she gets the foul. Yes. 
the junior, Sahara Jones, with the foul. She had 11 points and 11 rebounds versus Army. She can do a little bit of everything as a big guard. She can score at three levels. She's got a nice mid-range. She's only a junior, so she'll have another year in this system with Coach Joni Taylor's trying to implement in her first season in College Station. What a delight to spend some time with at the shoot-around today as well, Coach Taylor. Uh, she's really positive about the future of this team, and, and she's going to build it brick by brick, and she knows how to do it. Early in the season, you get in your principles and you put in your style, and she's changed the style of play. It's going to take a little while. And today she said it would be a good test to see what her team was really made of and the things that they really need to work Ooh. on as another long-range shot by the Aggies by Sydney Bowl. Sydney Bowles is from Georgia. She's a freshman. She was one of the top recruits in the class of 2022. She was the Georgia Gatorade Player of the Year. She really is an elite shooter. Working that single down screen out of the pinch post, and that's a read. You can curl it. You can pop it. You can do a lot of different things out of it. You just make the read. Duke with another offensive rebound. Two chances to score. Kennedy Brown knocks that down. The Eight. offensive boards are piling up here. Forty-three to twenty-seven. Good show from Brown. Slides back to take care of Patty. Shot clock again, approaching five. How many times have we seen this, particularly from the second quarter into the third? And because of that, you force a shot, and Duke will go the other way. Well, I like that Patty can pull Brown away from the basket. She's quicker. She's got a nice pull and go, but that time she just didn't take a very good shot, trying to use the rim to protect her shot. Volker was open, deflected. Good lesson for you youngsters at home. Keep your hands up. You hear them say that all the time. Patty there with the deflection. Texas A&M needs to come up with an answer here. As you did their body language right now, I've got some heads that are hanging, and this is all, there's got a lot of time left on the clock here. Just starting off the second half. Just need to create some offense with your defense, get a couple second shots, a little extra effort. A couple curls off that high screen. Then we're gonna have an elevator screen. We're gonna get a foul there. A little physical play down there. You mentioned Joni Taylor, and she's right. She talked about the power of women, and she's doing great things outside of the basketball court for women of all ages. Well, she really has a comprehensive program, and she wants to impact the community, and she runs a program, and she did it at Georgia, too, called Beyond Basketball, and it's for women in the professional women in the community. They meet once a month at 8 a.m., and it provides women in the area a place to go, uh, some inspirational speakers. She had Kalia Collier, who is the VP and Chief of Staff, of uh, basketball operations uh, in the NBA now. And, and you know, she's just um, brings women together to empower them. They talk about community events. So just going the extra mile for women in the community. I love that about Joni Taylor and teaching her players to be complete people. The and one for Patty. This crowd here on a Thursday night, Cameron Indoor, pep band, cheerleaders, dance team, all out supporting Coach Lawson's Duke women's basketball team. Volker. And Janiah Barker is going to get called for the over the back foul there, but I like the effort. She knows they've got to they've got to start to come up with the ball. They've got to uh, crash the offensive boards. Here we come in transition. It's a good pass, and Lee Volker with the crossover, and she tries to finish it, but then Janiah Barker gets a call for over the back, and Duke with another bucket, extending the defense again, making it difficult to make that entry pass. Taylor with another three. She's got 14 points to lead all players. Nothing coming easy for Texas A&M in the half court, and they really have not been able to get their transition game going. You just see in the point guard, you know, Mackenzie Green has the ball in her hands so long, and right there, Jendiah Barker just trying her hardest to 
put her team on her back and, and create something out of nothing down low. But she's going to get to the free throw line on that one. Talking a little bit to the official. And only a freshman at 6'4". She's got a great career in front of her. I certainly hope that that wheel is OK, because as you know, coach, the ankles are so important in this game of basketball. Sometimes you can roll it, get right back on it as if there's no big deal. Sometimes that thing can linger a little bit. Yeah, they can be, they can be uh, a pesty and keep you out of games too. Seems like she's okay. Trying to cut it to 15, nope. Rebound Taylor. Taylor with seven rebounds to go with her 14 points, having herself a quality game here. She's a senior. She's been here a year. She knows the program. She knows the system. Coach Lawson wants to run. Every game becomes valuable when you're in the last year of your career. She pulls up for another three. Nice rebound by Patty. Let's see what the Aggies can do in transition. Here Blue they Devils, come. Blue Devils have just done a great job getting back on defense. Patty will give it up. I feel like it'll be another sequence where the shot clock will get down below 10. And here's exactly where we are. Barker. Barker going to put the ball down on the court and turn it over. A little bit of frustration there. She needs to get back. You got to hustle back after a turnover. Looking for the contact and the foul. Probably earned it. No whistle, though, for Day Wilson. I thought Barker missed an opportunity to hit Patty down low on that high-low that time. She just seems like she's getting frustrated out there. And that's, you know, part of being a freshman, but you've got to got to maintain. And when you're that good of a player, you have to maintain a consistent demeanor, stay positive. And there's Booker looking for the, gets a little bit of daylight. And wow, drains the three. Another three for Texas A&M. Really sweet stroke from Barker. Six for 11 from behind the arc for the Aggies. Barker's got 13. Team on the air talking about the impressive freshman. Let's see if she can get the block right here. Instead, she'll get the foul. It'll be an and one. And a little bit of flex right there from Day Wilson. That's just way too easy. It's a handoff ball screen. It's got to be better defended as Day Wilson gets to the rim and scores. A bright light for Texas A&M in this game is their shooting from three. Six for 11 from behind the arc has really kept him in this game. It's Bowles with three, and you see Barker right there at six for hitting one of her two. Kindred's got one, but when they're able to get a little daylight behind the arc, they can knock it down. Right now, they're, you got to look for a silver lining here. Your two freshmen, Bowles and Barker, leading the way. 22 combined points, the rest of the team with 11, and, and Sydney Bowles and Janiah Barker were both signed at the University of Georgia, committed to the University of Georgia, and when Coach Joni Taylor took the Texas A&M job, they came with her, and they are certainly the future of this Texas A&M program. A little bit of frustration there on the bench as Taylor is assisted by Chelsea Newton, great player at Rutgers, Robert Mosley and Catherine Graham. The lead is 16. Just look at that denial defense by Reagan Richardson, not letting the next pass, just interrupting the flow of the offense. The offense can't get any kind of good rhythm going when the next pass can't be made, and Duke's denial defense has really inhibited the flow of the Texas A&M offense tonight. Balagoon will knock it out of bounds. The help down on the low block from Heidi, number 42, worth noting. Heidi, yet another one of the bigs that comes off the bench for Duke. She's a transfer from Tulane, 6'3", graduate student. She's from Austin, Texas. Thought Heidi fouled Patty, no whistle. Taylor driving to the rim, picked up and in by Richardson. Richardson now three for nine, and she's got eight points. Good, good hands from Oliver. Deflected, so not a backcourt violation. But look at how much time is off the shot clock here. Now Texas A&M takes a deep breath, but they got to figure out a play here, Coach. They've really had a difficult time executing right there, a 
Hand check by Celeste Taylor. So aggressive on defense. Second foul on Taylor. And Hilton will go to the line looking for her first points of the game. Aggies are five for seven from the line. Blue Devils taken 18 free throws in opposition. Thought we'd see a little bit of pressure there from Texas A&M. Said Duke comfortable. Oliver, that's a good play. Balagoon, I like that play. Balagoon finishes. I'm going to make Jada Malone defend those handoffs. And another miscommunication on that switch and a wide open shot. Heidi, strong defensively. Then the push. Just one extra push from Heidi. Everything else, footwork was there. But then with the body coach, she gets whistled for the foul. And Blue Devil Faithful don't seem to like that call. Grad student, as you mentioned, from Austin, Texas, transferred from Tulane, Heidi. Up and in. Malone. This is the second. And going the other way, Richardson to Jesus. Good pass, Heidi. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Nice dish. Another beautiful pass by the Blue Devils and DeJesus with the no look back against the grain between two defenders and Heidi just unable to convert. What a beautiful pass there by Vanessa DeJesus. That's one they'll break down in film study and they'll compliment the pass and then they'll just talk about Heidi about powering through that arm right there. Finish strong, finish strong, but she makes those free throws. Fifty-four thirty-six, three minutes remaining here. It's going to take Coach Taylor a little bit of time to reset a Texas A&M program that was really, really good for a long time. Down year last year, and Coach Taylor even said a two or three year process. She's got a great staff, really good recruiters, and she will certainly get it done. But as you said, it's just going to take a little bit of time and patience. Oliver with the rebound for a moment was thinking coast to coast. They'll drop it back to Heidi. They're trying to find her in and out. Good positioning by Heidi, everything but the bucket. Texas A&M will go the other way. And a travel. So turnover is starting to be a problem for the visitors from Texas A&M. Well, it's decision making too. Better decision making comes with progress. And we said that should be coming, that's their motto and just you know, committing to the process. And little by little, those decisions start to improve. And the defense starts to improve. And the understanding of the system starts to improve. 14 turnovers for Texas A&M, just four for Duke. That'll make Coach Lawson happy. Balagoon, <laughs> and one for Balagoon. 20-point lead, trying to make it 21. And that was created by Jordan Oliver, number 11, the transfer from Baylor. She draws attention, she sees her teammate, and she could have taken the shot, but she said, oh no, Elizabeth Balagoon, you have a better shot, and she gives up the ball for another assist. Debbie, we've talked about it before, Balagoon, one of those athletes that can score 30 or have three. Yeah, I think she's a player that the coaching staff was looking for um, consistency as she's in the last season of her career as well. Nice little runner for Texas A&M, showing some fight for Coach Taylor. K-9 
KK Green. Jackson. Screen from Balagoon. They continue to try to find Heidi. Well, they have multiple options in their sets. They've got a lot of reads off of screens and handoffs, and then they have some post options in there, and Heidi's been able to get some really good position on Sydney Roby. It's a good-looking side. It's a nice stroke. You commented on it before. If you're not going to make it, you go to the line and you make your free throws, it's all good. There you go. And Blue Devils shooting 77% from the line right now. Smooth for number 42, and it's a 21-point lead. Roby back in the game off the bench for Coach Taylor. Good pass down low. Better help from Heidi, and that'll be a tie-up. And it'll go back to Duke, I do believe. Possession arrow in favor of Duke. Solid minutes for number 42, Debbie Taylor, as this team is deep. Yeah, and she's a great example of depth in the post for Duke and a lot of different players getting minutes. You know, different, different rotations, a lot of options for Coach Lawson and her coaching staff, depending on the opponent. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, you asked her about the 17 players at off-ball foul called on Balagoon, and she embraced it, the 17 players. She was ready for it. She talked about the fact that, you know, they were playing with Mass forever, and, of course, her first season got cut short after, I think, four games, and she's like, she'll take the 17 players. She, they get to compete for playing time. She said after a season with injuries where they didn't have enough bodies out there to practice against each other, she's happy to see that many out there. I mean, she's got 11 transfers on this team, eight new players, so a lot of, a lot of bodies that create a lot of options. And she did sell us. She knew one thing tonight that would happen. She knew her team would work hard, and that's exactly what they've done. Spot on. Alongside Debbie Taylor, Dean Linky, delighted to be with you at Cameron. Such a great venue. Spent the whole day here today, Debbie, and soaked it all in. It's just so great to be here. It is, it is a wonderful place. Balagoon can hit the three, chooses to drive to the basket, contact from Barker, and she'll draw the foul. We see Ashlon Jackson out there for Duke, she, number three. She's a six-foot freshman. She's from Texas. Balagoon with 12. Just starting to get into the meat of it now here as you take a look at the upcoming schedule for Texas A&M. Well, things just get tougher for both these teams. And, and, you know, that's why today was just such a really good measuring stick to evaluate where you are. But you look at A&M, Texas, Southern Texas State, a very good Rice team. And then they go to Kansas um, and they get closer and closer to SEC play in the very, very strong, one of the strongest conferences in the country. Shot clock is off. This is a big possession and another turnover for Texas A&M. That's 15 turnovers. That one was kind of unforced, I'd say, Coach. It was, but what did Joni Taylor do? She just calmly spoke to her players. She's, she's over there, you know, right now, struggling to score, turning the ball over, but she just hasn't reacted. She stayed calm. She continues to teach. We've got a foul on the three-point line. Ernie Kindred with the foul on the arm. Again, discipline on defense. Another thing you learn as you play. Great pass to the corner, just right on the arm there of Ashlon Jackson. The freshman will go to the free throw line. First one is good. This is a little bit of an added dagger to Texas A&M. She does miss the second. Hey, 
Jackson, who is from the state of Texas, makes two of three. And that is the whistle. A solid third quarter for the Duke Blue Devils. Through three, they lead it 63 to 38. Duke 63, Texas A&M 38. Their ball screen offense for the Blue Devils, solid. Well, when you're Coach Joni Taylor and you take over a team that played primarily zone and you're teaching man-to-man, -man, ball screen defense certainly becomes a key. And Duke has really done a great job slicing and dicing through the man-to-man -man defense of Texas A&M. And they just really haven't done a good job defending the ball screens and the handoffs. But that will all come in time as they continue to learn and grow. Fourth quarter. Coach, I got to ask you, a and way down here, what are you trying to do here as a coach with this new team if you're Coach Taylor? Not that. You just keep learning. You, you, you'll watch her. She'll just keep teaching. She'll stay positive. And you go back and you watch the film and you, you fix the mistakes. And every day you go back to practice and you, you get a, another day better. They've got a lot of work to do, but they've got some good young pieces. They're bringing in a really good recruiting class, and they'll build it one brick at a time. Oliver. You know, leadership's really important for team success as well, and I think right now Texas A&M is searching for a lead. It's a nice back cut by Balagoon. Duke's done a nice job with their offensive execution tonight as well. Sixty-three thirty-eight. Earlier we saw Barker with the ankle trouble. Now she's got foul trouble. On the bench with four fouls with nine minutes remaining in the game. And as I mentioned earlier, they absolutely have to have that talented freshman as it will go off of Patty and out of bounds. She's certainly a big piece of the puzzle, and her quick maturity is going to be a big piece of the puzzle too. And then. You know, freshmen have a lot to learn on both sides of the ball, and, and there's a physical toughness, but there's also a mental toughness to play this game at a high level. Jordan Oliver now in running the point for Duke. You, lo you like her game, Coach. She can score, but, man, she can pass the basketball, as you can see right there. I mean, she just has such amazing vision, and you, there's another ball screen. Duke rolls it out, and Oliver delivers the pass. Right on point. Here we go, high screen, middle of the floor is tough. There's no help. You see Balagoon roll out and Oliver drags the screen, creates a little space. Sydney Roby just cannot get back. Two points for Balagoon. The lead is 27. Early pickup from Day Wilson. There's that screen, re-screen action again. Well covered by Day Wilson. Another contested pull-up jump shot. Difficult shot. Second chance opportunity, though, for Texas A&M. Let's see if they can take advantage of it, Coach. Patty. That's a nice shot. Leah Patty's really good with the rip and go from the high post. Like to see more of that. Speed of Taylor off the front of the rim. That's just an unforced error and Patty raised her hand. She knew it, taking responsibility for it. Looking to make it 27 and not a great shot. That time from Brown. Patty puts the ball on the court. Shovels it over to Bowles. Bowles three for three from deep, but we've seen Oliver step out in limited movement right now from Texas A&M. Body language out there. Confidence is fuel, and right now Texas A&M lacking a little bit of that. 
it's hard. You know, you're playing against a really tough defensive unit in Duke, and you're having difficulty moving the ball, and you're at the end of the fourth quarter, and you, you got to keep going. You got to finish this game, whether you come out of it with a win or not. Keep playing, keep learning, and, and right now they're just not moving. You got to cut hard. You got to set strong screens, make good passes, and, and they've got to, Texas A&M has to pick it up a little bit here. Jada Malone back into the game for Coach Taylor in Texas A&M. Such a different team without Janiah Barker in the game. There's a nice take by Jada Malone. Yeah, right off the bench, up and in. Malone, a sophomore from Spring, Texas, went to the Village School. Heidi right back in there, Balagoon. Well, look at the difference in the movement here for Duke. Taylor, back of the rim, gets her own rebound. Misses again, another rebound. Balagoon, Taylor decides she's not going to shoot three in a row. She'll drop it. Heidi not ready to be a turnover. Probably should have shot the three. She was open. And the other way up and in for Texas A&M. And Coach Lawson did not like that last sequence. She's got her hand over her mouth right now. And it's 65-44 Duke. Duke 65, Texas A&M 44. That's getting into it right there, the pet man. Wow, he is playing the symbols, boy. <laughs> You're gonna do something, do it well, Dean. <laughs> that was awesome. I want to thank Chad Lapman and our great crew, always outstanding here. As part of our coverage of Duke Athletics on ACC Network Extra, it's Duke 65, Texas A&M 44 is Duke. Looking to go to 4-0 before they hit the road to Toledo. Toledo did not fire up my analysts here, Debbie Taylor at I really, all. I really tried to give you a little <laughs> something, but it just didn't come out. I could have done San Antonio, other things that ended in O. I, I don't know. <laughs> Chicago, maybe. I could have been talking about Portugal. They're ready to really get going here. Check this out. Toledo, Yukon. And then they go on the road for Phil Knight Legacy. Northwestern will be fun, and then Richmond. Well, this is what you, this is how you find out what kind of team you really are. Great execution on the inbounds. And Duke's got quite a competitive slate with a very good mid-major program in Toledo at Toledo. They pack the house and then UConn. Uh, and then they continue with the Phil Knight Legacy. So some high level competition and, and we'll come back and after that string of games, we'll see what they're really made of and where they stand. Bowles lost her shoe, Coach Joni Taylor. Joni Crenshaw when she was lighting it up at Alabama. Now I think she has a really cool last name. Richardson. <laughs> I, I, I got you there, Coach. Debbie Taylor, Joni Taylor. It all works. The drive there from Richardson forced. Good hustle, though, by Volker. And then she stepped out of bounds. Lee Volker, the sophomore, has found herself in the starting lineup this weekend. And it's really because Couch Lawson says she just does the right thing. She's in the right place at the right time. She makes the right decision. And she just kind of makes the team move. She has a great understanding of the game of basketball. Over 3.30 now without a point from Duke. These are the kind of droughts that Coach Lawson has talked to us about quite a bit that she worries about, particularly when you think about that schedule coming up. They cannot afford those kind of droughts, even at Toledo, where they'll be pumped up. As you said, it'll be a nice crowd there. There are, in fact, a lot of Duke fans in Toledo. Oker with the rebound, and it's 65-46. Jackson back out there with the Jesus. It's so fascinating because you just never know what five you're going to get as the Jesus finishes at the rim. 
and the ball screen woes just continue, but that's certainly something that the Aggie staff will be able to address when they watch this film, and they'll just keep working at it. Sixty-seven, forty-six. Nice finish from Patty. To Jesus. Feel like a player that just makes the most of her minutes. Never knows exactly how many she's going to get. As she'll hustle here for the rebound. Just had that layup. Volker, Heidi. All five players touch the ball. And De Jesus keeps it alive for Duke. Pick a player, any player. De Jesus always gives quality minutes. Little shimmy and at the bucket, up and in. Duke up 67 48. Coach Lawson continues to shuttle players in and out. You never know what five are going to be out there as this bench is deep. They've got this one locked up with 336 remaining. It's 67 to 48. Balagoon. Balagoon having herself a pretty good game. Six for seven with 15 points. And we got a three-second call. Rarely do you see that. That's what you want to see from Elizabeth Balagoon. Little inconsistent last season, but today, six for seven, really efficient on the offensive end. Three for three from the free throw line, two rebounds, 15 points. 15 points in 16 minutes. That'll work. Long ball, and you can see right there, Barker had no plans of elevating right there and demonstrating a little bit of frustration as she runs down the court. Balagoon with the leak right there was open for a moment. Backcourt pass, Jackson misses at the basket. It'll stay with Duke. You did see Jackson say nice pass. It's important to thank the person that throws the assist. Wow, step out, Kennedy Brown showing a little range. The pressure from Duke continues to work. Richardson. Balagoon. They're going to keep it with Duke as well. Well, if you're Kara Lawson, 69-48, and you're still hustling, diving on the floor, you'll take that as you get ready to hit the road. That's what she told us. She knew her team was going to go hard. It's kind of been the signature of this Duke team. You know, there's only so many things you can control as a coach and as a player. You can't control whether your shots are going to go in, but you can control how hard you play, the level of effort on defense, level of effort on the boards, the energy you bring to the game. And the Blue Devils have certainly brought that. De Jesus trying to hit Balagoon on that roll. Kick out for De Jesus. Blocked there by Patty. AM, the outlet. Bowls, yes. AM with the transition basket. Nineteen point lead now. We're under the two minute mark. Blue Devil still working out of that pinch post. Kennedy Brown, handoffs, wing ball screens. There's the roll. That's well defended that time. De Jesus has to force one. And a shot clock violation. Good defense from Texas A&M. It's important to be able to play 40 minutes. And right now, um, Blue Devils not necessarily offensively as crisp as they were to start this game, but they're also getting a lot of players' minutes, and that's going to be important as they get into more highly competitive games, bigger, stronger, tougher opponents. Turnover. Richardson. Richardson will finish. A steal and a bucket. They needed that. Duke, two of their last eight.
final minute of play here. Green. Everything Duke's done defensively has just caused difficulty for Texas A&M on the offensive end. And it's been the big difference in the game. Unlucky for Jackson, who was looking for points five, six, and seven. She'll stay at four. Bowles out there with 13 points. Patty out there with 10. Barker now on the bench and a foul from Richardson. Yeah, Kara Lawson just watching her. You don't see her on her screen, but she was not happy about that foul. She's still coaching. Boy, she's got it. She's got a lead. She's going to win this one, and she does not sit down, and she does not stop coaching. She's trying to build this program, and she's constantly teaching. As you see Coach Taylor, yeah. She's teaching as well, and you can see just the calmness, and she's just, she knows. She, you know, she said, we're going to see what we get out of this game, and we're, we're going we're gonna to learn from it, and win or lose, we'll just keep going, and we'll keep building this program. With that, if you could elaborate, where do you see a &M going forward here? What do they got to fix? Well, I think they have to get much better defensively, and they're young, and they have a lot of new players out there, and she's going she's gonna to get them playing the pressure man-to-man -man style that she wants, but it's going to take a while, and, and the ball screen defense example, it's perfect to, to, to show the weaknesses in your defense. Duke did a great job exploiting that tonight. Seventy-one to fifty-two. Coach Lawson, Coach Taylor, second win in program history versus Texas A&M, and the first since twenty ten. Your takeaway for the Duke Blue Devils, who improved to four and zero. Blue Devils did this with their defense. They were disruptive. They they forced Texas A&M into twenty-three turnovers, and they had four double-digit scores. Great offensive balance. A nice win for the Blue Devils. Up next for Duke is Toledo. From the opening whistle, Duke looks strong, and they'll wrap it up. I want to thank Chad Lappin and his great crew, the talented Debbie Taylor. For all of them, I'm Dean Linky. Final score, Duke 71, Texas A&M 52.